everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. Halloween is just around the corner. When you are watching this, it is just a couple days away and I have made most of my Halloween costume this year, but there is a very important element missing. If you haven't seen my other videos, my Halloween costume this year is basically a glitter witch. And in fact, I don't think I mentioned this in my other videos, but my costume is actually part of a costume collaboration, which is called Whimsical Witches. So I have been leaving the links down in the description. I just don't think I've been talking about it in the video. But do check out the description to see the other videos of other costumers who have also been working on their own Whimsical Witch projects. I have already completed the skirt and the bodice. In fact, the bodice was my most recent video from this. So I will also link those down below. But basically, my idea was originally to take the strawberry dress and make it spooky. So again, I've made the outfit part of it now, but witches need witch hats, right? So today we are going to be making, or at least attempting to make, a witch hat to correspond to this outfit. Now the reason that I say attempting is because like any good maker does, I decided I wanted to make a buckram witch hat, so I looked up online how to make a buckram witch hat, and I found nothing. No, there's there's no one's apparently made witch hats out of buckram, so this might be a terrible idea. Most people apparently make their witch hats out of felt, but I wanted a giant witch hat. I love all of the artwork that you can see on like Instagram and things like that, where you have these super, super cute little witches in enormous hats. So that was the idea that I wanted to do. So today I am going to try to make an enormous witch hat. Now I've already figured out approximately how wide I want my hat, and I did that by actually taking this hat right here, which is from my 19 teens dress that I reproduced this summer, and I took this and put it on and determined it was way too small. And then I figured out, oh, I think that the witch hat I'm going for is about like two and a half inches or so wider on each side of this hat. Hopefully that's enough because part of me is like, oh, maybe I should just go even bigger. But also I am limited by how wide my buckram is. So if you're not familiar with buckram, buckram is a very, very stiff material that is actually kind of hard to find. And luckily I got my buckram a couple of months ago. I got it, I believe, from corsetmakingsupplies.com. I will leave a link down in the description below for where I got that buckram. And it is an open weave sort of material here. And as you can see, it is very stiff, comes in a very stiff roll here. But one layer of this buckram is actually not enough. They used to, I guess, make really thick millinery buckram, and then people didn't buy it for some reason. So now what we have to do is we have to double our buckram, at least. Some people, I think, triple it. But we're going to double it today and hope that that's going to be enough. So the buckram is this wide. Gosh, it is tempting. It, no, no, that's that's too big. <laughs> so I am going to make my hat uh, two and a half inches wider on each side than this brim, which is a total of 20 and a half inches wide. And hopefully that's sufficient. Now, one of the things that I realized with this project, if you've seen my other two videos on my spooky spider web separates, then you will know that my glitter tool sheds like nobody's business. And it dawned on me yesterday I can't put that over my face. That would be really stupid. So I'm not going to use it on the inside of the hat. I am, however, still going to use it on the outside of the hat because I figure then the brim will protect my eyes from said dangerous glitter falling into my eyes. Hopefully I'm right. So the outside of this hat, or I guess the layers of this hat in general, it's going to be two layers of buckram one layer of the purple cotton that I've been using as my base layer for the other projects as well. I'm not going to mull this. Mulling is when you treat buckram with like flannel and stuff. I'm not going to do that just because there's so many layers already. So it's going to be the cotton, then one layer of the glitter tool on the outside, and then one layer of the spider web glitter mesh. And that is going to be for the above the crown, the top side of the crown, and also for the pointy part, which I'm hoping to be able to like make that point fall over nicely. This is a total experiment, so I hope you haven't come here expecting a complete tutorial, because 
we're gonna see if this even works. And then the underside, I'm thinking that I might actually want it all black because if you haven't noticed, I'm incredibly pale and when I wear black things around my face, it like stands out kind of poppy and ghostly. So I'm thinking I'm just gonna embrace the ghost feeling and go with black on the underside. So that means that I will probably use a black cotton most likely, and then the black glitter cobweb material because that doesn't actually shed like the tool. So it should be fine even just having that glitter sparkle over my eyes and then I'll still get some of that glitter, just not the purple. So that's a lot of pieces to cut out. The good thing is that for the round pieces, it should be pretty simple. I'm gonna have to make one perfect circle, which that, you know, it's a challenge to make a perfect circle, but I'm going to make that first probably with the cotton because that way I can quarter it and just draw out a quarter of a circle. And then I'm going to use that as my base to cut the back rim, the tool, all of those other layers, and just hope that I have enough fabric. The first piece is cut out. So this is the piece that I'm going to use to cut out the rest of them. And I decided to do 21 inches across total. So that's what we have here. And I had folded it in quarters and just done a sort of a compass, just like with my ruler of 10 and a half inches around. Then I went and I found out the circumference of my head, which is 21 and three quarter inches. Uh, and I think that's a little bit tight, but better to be tight right now. And then I can loosen it up once it's like a solid thing. But I found that out and found the radius of what that is, which is 3.46 inches. Now you don't wanna cut that full 3.46 though, because you need to allow room to notch up the inside of the circle. So all of this, it's gonna get notched and then folded, and that is how the crown attaches to it. So you need to make sure that you have about a half and an inch to allow for that notching. So that's why I did three inches around like this to cut out the hole in there. And so then you wind up with this. Now I've gotta go do that same thing to all of the other layers. Now with some buckram, they have enough of like the kind of gluey sticky stuff on them that you can kind of fuse them together with your iron. However, I would still recommend sewing them together as well. This is two pieces right now of the buckram it's still not super like strong. I'm a little worried about this. I will be wiring the brim, so hopefully that will help. But this is a huge brim, so it makes me a little bit nervous that I'm just going with two because this doesn't seem super, you know, uh, stiff. And anyway, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to sew just like a straight line of stitching around the outer side and then also one about like three quarters of an inch to an inch away from this circle, which I will be cutting out that circle, but I'll be sewing enough space distance that I'll be able to do the crenellations and have some room to play with fit. And then I'm also just going to do like a ziggy line of just straight stitching that kind of goes all over here just to kind of help sandwich this together and remove any of the bubbles. Cause I do feel like when you iron it, you also tend to get a little bit more of the bubbles going on and I don't want that. So I am going to go ahead and do that. By the way, I feel like this goes without saying, but don't use your fabric scissors to cut buckram. Use regular scissors that you don't mind getting kind of messy or screwed up or whatever. And also keep in mind that your needle's not gonna like you very much after making a hat. So change your needle when you are done with your hat. So now to figure out the cone section. I saw a thing online about how to calculate this. I really hope that I did it right because it doesn't really look right. Hopefully you can also see these lines on here. But basically you want to figure out how tall you want the point. I decided I wanted 20 inches. That might be super big, but I wanted it very pointy. And then you also have to figure out your head circumference plus one inch seam allowance. Now I had cut a smaller head circumference before, but I realized like with the wig and everything too, I need a lot more room on here. So I actually cut, including the seam allowance, 24.25 inches is this over here. So what I did was I took my ruler and I measured 20 inches starting here and then going around just like you're doing a circle skirt or a hat 
and just going around like this until I reached a point where this measurement here, these dots here, was 24.25 inches. So I'm about to cut it. Hopefully I did it right. And then I will also be cutting this out of the glitter tool and the cobweb material. And I will also be cutting the lower portion of this out of the buckram. Now, if I did this all the way out of the buckram, it would be stiff and it would like kind of crease to move. And I don't want that. I want something more malleable. So actually what I'm probably going to do is maybe do a layer of interfacing up here as well or something stiffer. Maybe um, I don't have a felt. Heck, maybe a wool. I've got this wool that's just been sitting there. So something stiffer that has body, I'm going to do the whole thing out of. But I am going to do like the lower, I don't know what this is right here, maybe that's five inches where my fingers are. I'm going to cut that out of the buckram, the two layers of buckram. So I have a lot more cutting ahead of me. Of course, now I'm just holding this up to the buckram and looking at it. And I'm wondering if I shouldn't have made this way taller, actually, because I feel like the buckram is so big compared to how tall this is. I thought I was going for extra tall, but this seems extra short. So hmm, I'm going to think on that. So I know that this looks super incredibly weird, but I've got this ruler that is has a wire sort of thing in it and it is flexible. And I decided, okay, let's put this together with the buckram and the ruler and just kind of see if I can get the right shape out of it. So, I mean, it's not quite right, but basically I wanted a shape that's going to go up and then kind of curls a little bit more. I've stuck the end of the ruler that I don't want down here, but I feel like this is more on the right track, like this sort of size. I want this like cartoon sized. So naturally this measurement is 31 inches and I cut it to 20 inches. So guess I'm recutting that piece. I'm glad that I did this before I cut all of the other pieces or else I would probably not have enough fabric. And I really hope that I have enough fabric left of the purple. And of course, I don't have enough fabric left to cut a 31 inch piece. I could probably cut a 26 and a half inch piece and that's it. So this was supposed to be done so long ago. And now I have to decide if it's worth it to cut out the size that I want, which means a trip to Joanne's tomorrow, running it through the, well, I guess I probably don't have to pre-wash it because it's not like I'm going to wash a hat, but I guess that's it for me tonight because I have no more fabric. So good night. I am back. It has actually been two days since that last clip because yesterday I wound up dealing with a cat emergency. Don't worry, Dora is recovering. This is what she looks like right now. I feel very, very sad. She had an abscess from a mouse bite because she wouldn't leave all of the mice alone. Great. Anyway, $675 later, I have a recovering cat, and I am back to working on my witch hat. If anyone does want to help contribute, please don't feel obligated at all, but if anyone wants to help contribute to Dora's vet bill, uh, my Kofi is down in the description below. Anyway, I went and while I was waiting on her at the vet yesterday, went to Joanne's, I got another yard of the purple. I also got a yard of felt. And I am going to line the crown part of the hat with this felt because I think that this will give it the good amount of body that I need. And then uh, I might also stick a wire up in the hat as well so that I can actually like mold it to a shape. I'm thinking that might be good to stick some millinery wire up there. So I am going to now cut that 32 inch tall crown out of this this and the two glitter fabrics, the glitter tool and the glitter cobweb mesh. And then I will be able to start putting everything together. So it is entirely possible that I've gone too big with it this time, but you know what? We're just gonna run with it because why not? So you just saw that I was wiring the brim. I have put millinery wire all the way around with a zigzag stitch. And now what I'm doing is I've taken the crown, which I surged around all of the edges of the crown to adhere the felt cotton 
glitter tool and the spiderweb mesh all together and now I have taken pins and pinned this I folded it in half and pinned this edge here together I'm going to sew this by machine and I don't know if I'm going to incorporate the wire at this point or if I'm going to put the wire in afterwards I'm really not sure but I do think that this top needs to be wired but first I'm just gonna sew it and then see how that part goes and then I think I can start putting everything together now I'm gonna put most of this together honestly using hot glue because time and also I don't care and this is a costume and was supposed to be finished several days ago. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my top portion, which is all surged together there, and I'm going to lay it on my buckram and glue around the edges here and also glue kind of where I put the basting stitch, which I don't think you can see because it's white on white, but kind of where I put that so that there's enough room to cut those crenellations out and not get involved with glue. I don't want to get gluey with my scissors and everything so it's probably going to be about an inch in from the edge on here is where I'm also going to glue and hopefully none of that will show through the three layers and then I'm also going to glue the underside again I'm going to glue around the edge and really probably in the same exact spot on the inside with the underside which is the black sateen con sateen underneath with the black spider web mesh on top so that will all wind up getting sandwiched like that once all of that's sandwiched then I can take my cone portion after I've turned it right side out of course I will wind up clipping the inside here to be able to turn it right side out and I can take this and see just how big around this crown is Hopefully it's right. I mean, I am going to put it on my head and try, but hopefully that's right. And I'm going to take the buckram portion that I've cut that is the same shape as the band here, and I'm going to start putting that all together. So to do that, I'm going to have to cut those crenellations that I was talking about on here. Those will get folded up, and then those will get glued to the buckram, and then the buckram will get glued to the crown, uh, the felt crown so hopefully all of that will work I will check in with you as I do with several of those steps but yeah basically it's going to be a lot of hot gluing by the way I probably should have mentioned that for the crown inner portion that is made out of the buckram I basically assembled that pretty much the same way as the brim and that means that I took two of them cut out two the same they're five inches tall by the way and then they are the shape of the rest of the crown the outside of the crown and so they still have that one inch seam allowance which will wind up overlapping like this and getting glued in place and then I just sewed along the outer edges and did another zigzaggy sort of thing inside and now this is ready to be glued and and put on to the brim. So everything is just kind of pinned in place at the moment. I'm thinking that this crown is actually too high, the five inches. I don't know, it just feels a little high. And I'm also, to be honest, a little worried that, <laughs> actually no, I'm positive that it's going to be too small. So I think what I'm actually going to do, again, everything is just like pieced together. Oh, it's totally getting stuck in my hair though. Um, so I have cut the crenellations on here. I haven't done it on the fabric pieces yet. And then this, so it turns out that felt and buckram love each other. Like you just get them near and they're like a magnet. So this is actually, there are a couple pins in here now, but it is literally mostly just stuck into there. But I think that the half inch seam allowance, because of that whole like circles getting smaller thing, it has actually made it so that the inner buckram is a pinch too small particularly since I plan to be wearing a wig with this and then of course the layers in here will make it even smaller so I am going to undo a little bit of this right here I am going to cut the crown a little bit smaller the buckram portion of the crown a little bit shorter and I am going to make this part have a quarter inch seam allowance going out here which is as small as I can make it and um, then there's also going to be uh, some of the overlap will need to get cut off, I think, because it's overlapping by about an inch and a half at this point instead of the inch that I wanted. And then hopefully that will be set and I can start gluing it together. 
All of the edges of the brim are now all glued. So I have glue all around the edge here and on top. And there's also glue on the inside up here and also down in here around the inside. And as you can see, I've cut all of the crenellations out on all of the layers. I actually cut them separately. So I cut the buckram first and then I cut the others before I glued them on. And it really doesn't matter if they're all in the exact same place. You just need them to have the ability to fold up like this. Now I'm not positive that they are cut to the exact shape yet because I did wind up making the crown a little bit bigger and I have now put this together. There is a wire, I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, there's the wire that's right in there. So it's just one millinery wire that I folded and the fold is up here. That allows me to curl this around however I want really. And then the wire comes down. I did it front and back and I did it like on the seam. Honestly, I probably wouldn't do that again. I'd probably do it side and side. And I'm almost tempted to add another wire and have that side and side, but I feel like that might just be too many wires up in the top. But the wire goes and gets tucked in behind the buckram in here and then I just glued it in place. I don't know how well that's going to stay. It's just glued where it goes into the buckram. So yeah, I, I don't know about this wire part, but it's in there for now anyway. And now this part can get attached to this part or the other option which I maybe should do depending on, I haven't decided if I'm hand sewing or uh, machine sewing the binding on here, but frankly, it would be a lot easier to do binding right now on here than it would once I add this. So I might do that. I'm planning on just using pre-purchased, pre-packaged double fold bias tape, like the wide stuff, and then just putting it around the outside, just black. So hopefully I have that. I haven't looked in my stash to see if I do. Otherwise, I'm going to have to make my own and cut it out of something. But yeah, I probably should do that because that way I could machine sew one side and then hand sew the other side. So I guess I'll do that before I add the crown because we got to think ahead and make things easier on ourselves. The binding of the hat is finally finished. Here, let me actually show it to you like this so you can see the binding. There we go. And on this side, so I sewed it from this side on the machine, which was actually quite difficult because uh, with all of the layers and everything, particularly with the buckram, the machine just wanted to skip stitches. So there were a lot of places that I had to go over multiple times so that it would actually sew instead of skip like a chunk. And then this side I sewed down by hand, which was probably a mistake because it took me hours. And now here it is, uh, 8.30 and I still have to put the crown on and edit this video. So now I'm going to start putting the crown on. I am going to hot glue it around here. Again, some of these I may have to cut deeper so that I fit the crown, but that's fine. I can just cut as I go because I don't even care if the brim is like perfectly even, uh, you know, I can make some parts a little narrower or whatever. That's totally fine. And uh, also Dora has joined me in here now. So I will just show you guys, Dora, Here's my little baby girl. If you're squeamish, you might want to, oh, look at how ferocious she is. You might want to skip this next part though, because she does have a little tube sticking out of her side to help drain her abscess. So skip this if you're squeamish, just skip the next few seconds, but it's right over here. The poor baby. I know it's awful. I don't like looking at it, but here's Dora and uh, now she's on my hat. Great. Thanks, Dora. Okay. I'm going to go get my ailing cat off of my hat who is getting stuck. What are you doing? Are you eating my hat? Don't eat my hat. She was either eating my hat or her cone got stuck to it. I'm really not sure which, but I'm going to help her a little bit itch that itch that she can't reach and then continue with the gluing. Careful, Dora. So it is the oversized hat that I was going for, but it is a little bit tight on my head and this is without a wig on. So I'm a little concerned about that. It's not entirely done yet. I still have to put some sort of a band or something around here to hide the join because you can see the surged bit right in there. Um, and then also I haven't done any sort of lining to the inside and I would like to do a partial lining just to cover up the buckram area. I want to retain access to the wires, especially if I want to add more wires because honestly they really should have been on the sides, not front and back. So I'm not going to line the whole thing, but 
that is where we are currently. I think the thickness of all of these layers folding up really made the hat significantly smaller because the crown part of the hat alone could go fully over my head, but I should have kept in mind the thickness of this area here. It still though, again, it is like pretty close to what I was going for other than the size. I also, I don't know, I wish it was wider here. I'm not really sure how to get a hat to be wider there. I'm guessing that you don't do the conical top part. You must do some sort of other shape to get that. And obviously if it was wider, then it would fit my head better. But I mean wider in general, kind of scrunchy up here. And yeah, I'm not really sure how that would have happened. But I do think that having the buckram in here, the slightly shorter buckram, since I did cut this down about three quarters of an inch, is better. So again, it was about like four and a quarter inches tall at this point. And then having the wire in here is definitely necessary to be able to get that sort of like curl in there. And I think the felt interior is also doing a really great job. So I'm glad I went with the felt. And the buckram with the wire in the brim is doing quite well. I mean, I could fold this in various ways if I wanted to, but why would I do that? Because that is really derpy. So I am going to figure out what I want to do for the band and put just a little circle piece or straight piece or whatever of lining on the inside and then it will be done. So here it is. I decorated it with a band of the spiderweb tool just kind of gathered up just like a really long rectangle. I don't remember how wide across it was but I think it was about this wide and it's just scrunched and glued in like three places like just a little dab, a little dab, a little dab, and then the ends are glued together, or rather there are some dabs holding them in place, and the ends are underneath this bow, which is just more of that original band with some of the glitter tool underneath it. I think it's interesting how smoky purple it looks compared to this purple because it doesn't have the cotton underneath, so this is just the glitter tool and the spiderweb tool, and basically it's the, they're laid on top of each other, rectangles with the ends brought around and then the ends are just overlapped right in the center and then I took actually this is a little piece of the selvage that I cut off of that band and it's just wrapped around a bunch of places and then tied in a little knot and then that all is glued to the band so that's all on there now finished decorating and then the inside is actually from that original cone top that I I cut and I just used that same piece because it was already like the same length or the right length and made it about like five and a half inches tall folded over the edges glued it in place here glued it in the seam right here and then there's just a few dabs of glue here because actually since that cone was smaller the top here is narrower than the actual hat is so it is not flush all the way around there's just a few dots that are gluing it in place but I can still access the wires and it is now nicely lined of course I feel like that lining made it even smaller on my head so this is definitely going to be a hat pin type situation because it does not necessarily fit my head as it probably should but I really like the bendy part I love the giant bow on it I think that it will coordinate quite well with the rest of the spiderweb outfit speaking of which I am going to attempt to take some footage of all of this together the whole outfit together and insert that next
managed to find a break in the rain. <laughs> Yay! I'm so glad that I was able to get outside and just shoot even just that little bit of footage for you guys and some pictures. But the hat is all done. It's now hanging a little lower than it was with the pictures but it does have the wire in there so I can kind of bend it however I want so that's good. Uh, it does still feel quite tight on my head which was one of the reasons why I opted not to do the wig today. That and I wanted to try a different look a little bit more like a glamorous witch as opposed to like I feel like the other one was very kind of 90s goth like teenager. <laughs> which I loved and I totally embrace, but uh, I wanted a little bit more glamorous with this huge hat. So that's why I went with this styling today, that and the fact that I'm really not sure a wig will fit under this hat. So we'll see on Halloween because that was my intention to wear the wig with the hat. Hopefully they work together. But overall, I am pleased with how it turned out. I think it is the size that I really wanted. Like it just has that Edwardian hat effect, which I love. And I love that I can bend the brim however I want to. I really like this kind of low in the front, high on the sides look. I think that it does very nicely with my face. But, and I love the giant bow. I'm so glad that I decided to go with this giant bow. I feel like, again, it's very fitting for kind of an Edwardian witch look. So overall, I hope that you liked this video and that it was interesting and helpful to you. If you liked this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs out on Tuesdays and other costuming content usually not vlog style like this, out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram, so please go follow me on Instagram, that's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, or Dora's Vet Bill, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Kofi down in the description below. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patron, Sharon. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. Have a wonderful Halloween weekend. Tell me about your plans for Halloween. Leave a little comment down below and let me know what you're up to for Halloween. And I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!